In seventh grade at Bancroft Middle School, I had a crisis. And that crisis started with a haircut gone terribly, horribly wrong. <laughs> it turns out that no matter how cool the teacher is, in this case, Ms. Tronvig, the PE teacher, it is not cool to have a matching haircut. <laughs> The crisis grew in typical middle school fashion with braces and acne, and I struggled with friends and feelings of self-worth. In a moment of desperation, I cried to my mom, and I told her that people were saying and thinking terrible things about me. Now, my mom thought my haircut was darling, but we will overlook that because she was wise in so many other ways. She said to me, Jenny, what makes you think you're so special that people sit around and talk about you? Ouch. Now that was harsh, but don't think less of my mother. She knew exactly what my adolescent self needed to hear, and she followed up that bold statement with instruction. Get outside yourself, serve others. You have talents to develop and work to do. I have often wondered how often I have allowed what I think people are thinking about me to make me small or limit me or cause me to hide. Do you, like me, allow the fear of criticism to control your decisions, your ambition, or your capacity? As a woman in politics today, I get a good look at criticism every single day. I have an entire file folder full of criticism. No matter if that criticism is baked in fiction or fact, it can change the way we think about ourselves. Fear of criticism can cause me to hide. Fear of criticism can cause me to second guess my instincts, keep me from contributing, and not allow the world to see the real me. Do I fear showing the world who I really am? Am I really who they think I am? You'd never know it, but Gilbert firefighter Mace Mattingly was once considered incapable. He's not but he had to change policy and perception in order to serve his community. Assistant Gilbert Fire Chief Rob Duggan said, Mace Mattingly's injury and decision to amputate changed firefighter standards across the nation. Before Mace, the rule book said, a below the knee amputation would actually prohibit a firefighter from doing his job. Well, that was written some years ago and directly as a result of the work by Mace and the Gilbert Fire Department, that standard was changed. Mace is an EMT firefighter, so he saves lives and he inspires people like young Logan seen here to not allow themselves to be limited by what other people see. Mace effectively told people, I am not who you think I am. Kalani Goldberg is an eighth grader here in Gilbert. She can teach us all a lesson about boldly rejecting criticism with the help of her parents, Kalani created a video and she wrote down the words that other students had used to describe her. She physically wore those words. And then in the video she said, every day you are hurting me. Every day you are hurting each other. Kalani tells her own critics, I will not wear your words anymore. She told them, I am not who you think I am. It's a natural tendency for us to want to show the world only our strengths and to distance ourselves from our weaknesses. We fear being vulnerable and, in effect, flawed. We are hyper-focused as a society on perfection. Social media projects carefully curated photos and stage glimpses into the lives of strangers and friends. We all have a picture in our head of what our personal perfection looks like. I catch myself wanting perfect vacuum lines and a tanned in tone size four figure and perfect, submissive, quiet, self-motivated children. <laughs> it's not that reality isn't great. It's just not great every minute of every day. In today's environment, we do have more control than ever over our image. And I can reveal to you only what I want you to see. Do you remember how we used to take pictures? I do. <laughs> I was trying to explain to my kids the other day what film was. Kind of embarrassed that I had to explain to them what film was. I was telling them that you used to have to go to the store to buy film. 
And then you'd take the film home and you'd put it in your camera and then you only got to take either 12 or 24 pictures. And then you actually took the film out of the camera, took the film back to the store, filled out the envelope, dropped it in the slot, and then a week later you went back to the store to pick up your photos. And if you're anything like me, most of your photos were blurry. And I still kept them and put them in my magnetized album because it took me three trips to the store an entire weekend of babysitting to actually get those photos. My kids only know the world where we take 15 photos of nearly the same thing then we crop it, filter it, and post it immediately so that the world can know how much fun we're having right this minute. Instead of really bad haircuts, we're only showing our really good hair days. Instead of the awkward stage that was once considered a rite of passage, it's fancy filters of flawless skin and invisible braces. If you think people are perpetually on vacation, always on trend, eating the freshest, most desirable food you've ever seen, and have perfect children, then you, like me, have been deceived. This is not reality, and we have created a completely unrealistic and unattainable image. During my campaign for mayor, I sent carefully worded and photoshopped flyers out to as many people as I could. And when you're running for office, you're selling yourself, you're selling your ambitions, you're sell selling your vision and your capacity and your abilities. And you want to put your best foot forward. Well, one afternoon, I got a voicemail. I have saved that voicemail in my file folder of criticism. It was the voice of a woman who made it very clear that she was not buying what I was selling. She didn't like the Photoshop version of me, and she really didn't like what she described as my toothy grin. <laughs> well, I think I surprised her the next day when I called her. I called her back. I wanted her to know that there was a real person behind that postcard, but I also wanted her to know that I wasn't who she thought I was, that I have flaws, I'm not perfect, even though that was the image that I was trying to portray. We had a very spirited conversation and I practiced my listening skills and I came away with an incredibly valuable lesson. If I really want to lead in any capacity, I have to allow people to get to know the real me, flaws and all. Not everyone will accept me and that's okay but I won't let the fear of criticism limit me, make me small, or prevent me from serving the people and the town that I love. I want to introduce you to Colin Karchner. Colin is your neighborhood funny guy, also a husband, father, and videographer. Colin used some self-deprecating humor to point out that there really is so much more behind the photo. After creating hilarious parody videos about getting his knees cool sculpted and his tonsils injected with filler, and drawing lots of attention to the extreme some might go to for the perfect image, Colin shifted his focus and he begged the social media world to be more authentic. The extremes became less funny and more real when he started to get messages that shocked him. The messages talked about the struggle that real people were feeling to measure up, to be perfect, to be flawless. Colin began a campaign to change the billboards that lined his highways. Instead of billboards that showed plastic surgery and other images and desires for perfection, the billboards changed to affirm what is already true about you. You are beautiful. You are unique. You are exactly what the world needs. Instead of acknowledging all the superficial things that we would like to change about ourselves, Colin urges us to see and appreciate what we really are. So how can we strike a balance between showing our best selves, putting our best foot forward, and still be real, less photoshopped, and more perfectly flawed? Before firefighter Mace, challenged others' perceptions of his abilities, he first had to decide if his amputation was really gonna limit him. Before Kalani Goldberg faced her critics, 
she had to dig deep and find within her a bold confidence. Before Colin Karchner woke up the social media world, he had to appreciate and even poke a little fun at his own perfect imperfections. It's not our social media accounts or our campaign postcards or our, our middle school photos that tell our story. By design, we are so much more than what anyone sees. You are not a stagnant picture or a snapshot of someone else's thoughts or words. You are a dynamic, growing, living person. I once heard Dr. Michael Crow from Arizona State University tell a group of young people that their brains were the most complex structures in the universe. I have a few teenagers of my own, and so I thought that was an exceptionally bold statement. And so I did a little digging. And here's what I found out. We have more brain cells, neurons, and nerve connections than the number of stars in the Milky Way. Think for just a second what thinking looks like in your brain. What do all those neurons and connections tell us? They tell us that your brain has infinite capacity and that you have immeasurable ability. Even bigger than that, you are one of a kind. There is only one you. This is proof that the only way people will really ever know us is if we challenge the limits that don't actually exist. These limits are manufactured by you and me, and they do nothing but stifle who we really are. When someone doubts your strength because of what they see, be a mace and show them that you are so much more. When someone tries to make you small, be a Kalani and stand up and face them. When you have doubts about who you are, believe a Colin and see and embrace the real you. You are limitless. You are growing. You are more than anyone can see. You are more than I can see. When you draw upon that power, you can boldly state, I am not who you think I am. And that's a really good thing. Thanks.